Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chris Shelton. I'm the pastor of Reach Out Christ Kingdom Ministries. I know you're all anxious to see Meadowlark living. I was blessed that the person who wrote the forward in my book also wrote an endorsement in Metal Art Lemon's book. Trust me, that shot. This is my copy here. This is mine. You can't have it. <laughs> it's a great book. And actually, I don't even think he brought a whole lot here. That wasn't the point of this visit. Uh, but if you get a chance, please grab hold of it because uh, while you learn about a lot about this country and a lot about a man you didn't know about, this basketball legend, but just as a really outstanding Christian man. The uh, person that wrote the uh, Ford in my book also wrote an endorsement in his, and, and uh, I was very blessed he called and said, would you like to meet Metal on Clement? How fast do you think it took me to say, yeah. <laughs> well, he called me, and I was very blessed to see him play when I was about 12 years old. That was a few years ago. And when I got to meet him in person, though, I was just like that kid who was 12 years old. I had this big, goofy grin on my face. And I just felt the same joy I had as a kid. And I just want to let you know you're all in for a big treat tonight. Uh, I was very blessed when I got a phone call out of the blue, and it was saying that Metal Art had kept thinking about us. He knew we weren't a very big ministry. He knew we reached out to folks that didn't have a lot. And he wasn't asking anything in return for the visit. But he said he just felt like stopping and visiting while he was coming through. Now this is a man that has been in front of kings, queens, Presidents, Popes, and Billy Graham. He can pick up the phone, he can call anyone, and go anywhere he wants to go. But he felt led to come and visit us here in Pigeon. That's what's classic. He felt that he had been blessed and was supposed to bless others. He said, he said instead of just going where there are lots of people and lots of money, and he asked God every morning, God, what would you have, would you have me do this day? And he said he kept feeling like he was supposed to come visit us here at Big. Isn't that pretty cool? Well, what he couldn't have known was that we've been praying for a community outreach opportunity just like this. And I quickly told him that I really appreciated his heart. But when he was so big, would he mind if I reserved the community center and opened this up on the community outreach opportunity that should be? And he said, that's cool. How many of you think that God answers prayer? Yeah. You know, when you pray for a community outreach, and God has Metal Art Lemon call you for the Northeast Arkansas town, I think God's moving in a big way in this area. Yeah. Internationalist, international evangelist, Ronnie, the preaching machine, Raven. Oh,
just want to say welcome to Pickett. And uh, uh, when I thought about uh, coming down here, I thought I'd bring a cup with water in it. You remember when you used to run around the baseball court? And you stop and pour that big uh, pan of water on you? You remember that? Or you aren't old enough? <laughs> anyway, when I, when I was uh, graciously Accepted. In fact, I was very happy to be uh, asked to come and uh, welcome him to Pickett. Uh, and I started trying to think about what can I say. I can't say much to uh, add to the life he's already living that you all know about. Uh, but while I was thinking about that, I thought about uh, uh, last Christmas I was asking my church to speak to the little kids back in the classroom in the Sunday school. So I went back there and I well, I was trying to think about what to talk about. It was Christmas time, so I said, well, I'll just talk about Christmas and the real meaning of Christmas and so forth. So uh, I stopped in the middle of my speech and I said uh, to the kids, I said, how many of you know the name of uh, Jesus' mother? Well, of course, all the little kids just their arms were waving in the air. And uh, so I asked a little girl down front, what her name was, and she said, well, it's Mary. So then I said, okay, how many of you know what uh, uh, Jesus' father's name was? And it got real quiet, and they started looking back and forth, and finally one little boy said, oh, I know, I know. I said, well, Sonny, what's his name? He said, his name is Verge. I said, Verge, where did you hear that? He said, everybody's heard about Virgin Mary. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> About two months ago, I turned on the TV. I wasn't sleeping well that night, and I woke up in the middle of the night, turned on the gospel station, and lo and behold, here's Middle Ark Women sitting there. And uh, I didn't know at that time that he turned in to be a preacher. And I said, man, if he's a good preacher, if he was a ball player, he's a ball of fire. So anyway, uh, I want to say a special welcome to him, to pick it, and uh, may you preach the word of God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's, it's really wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. I was told I was here in the mid-50s. I can't remember that far back, but I guess I was here. But it's good to be here now. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, hopefully we can have a good time here today. 45 minutes, maybe a little longer. Uh, I'll be over at the table signing autographs afterwards. We ran out of books, so we don't have any books. You can go on my web and if you can order books from there. Leave your name, we'll autograph them for you, get them back to you. So uh, tonight we're gonna, we're gonna minister a little bit. I'm not a preacher, I'm a minister, but sometimes I preach. I'm not a prophet either, but sometimes I do prophesy. And if God gives me the word, a word tonight, prophetic word, then I will give it to you. But God has been using me over the years the ministers of word of joy. I find that throughout the world today, people don't laugh anymore, or they don't laugh enough. We have so many things to think about, just making it through the day. Uh, so many people talk about uh, joy, and people laugh for every now and then. Uh, but they never get down to really the need of it all. Years ago, I wanted to preach like people like the preaching machine, and that didn't work for me. Uh, a good buddy of mine told me, he'd been telling me this for the last 20 years, he said, be yourself. That was Rosie Greer. Rosie Greer played football with the Los Angeles Rams for several years, along with four of the 
will, I, I call them the fearsome forces, which means they will hurt you bad. <laughs> Rosie became a minister. Uh, he just uh, got in a divorce, and uh, he was living in an apartment, and a man came up to him and said, knocked on the door and said, open up. Rosie said, who is it? What do you want? The man said, God sent me. Rosie picked up a baseball bat. Now Rosie said, he knew. He thought the man was out of his mind. But he opened the door. Rosie said, I'm going to talk to him a while. Change his life. Because Rosie wanted to talk to him about the man in Galilee. Rosie, son, little Rosie, he's not a little anymore. He said, Dad, I saw this man on TV. His name is Dr. Fred Price. Can we go to his church on Sunday? Rose said, No, I don't want to go to the church with nobody. I don't want to go to church with anybody. I will not go to church with anybody. Little Rosie, but Dad, I want to go to church and see this man. He said, okay, then we'll go. And Sunday, Rosie went by and picked his son up. They went to church. They gave an altar call. Rosie's son was the first one down the altar. And Rosie was right behind him. Both of them got saved, and afterwards, he said, uh, Dad, can we invite Mom next Sunday? Rose said, no! <laughs> she took everything I own, man. <laughs> We're not going to go to church with Mom. He said, oh, Dad, let's invite Mom. Rose said, okay. So he invited her. And uh, they gave her an altar call. And she went down to see Pastor Price also. She got saved. And on the way back home the next, but after service, she said, Mom, she said, Rose, would you like to come up and have a cup of coffee? She said, oh, no, I don't want no coffee for me. <laughs> she said, oh, come on, Dad. Dad, come on, let's go and have a cup of coffee, Mom. So Rose said she invited him in, and she got up to go get the coffee. She said, she looked good going away from him. <laughs> she came back with the coffee. She looked good coming back. <laughs> Soon after that, they were remarried. And they lived together many years together. They fell in love all over again. You can fall in love all over again. God and wrong in your life. Several months ago, uh, Monty, she asked God to go to be with the Lord. And I have a message on my phone that he left. He, left he said, he told me, he said, love your wife. He said, I'm ready to live by myself. And he said, love your wife. married men out there, if your wife needs to grab a hand, I challenge you to grab your wife's hand right now. She's sitting next to you. Behind you, in front of you, grab her hand and hold her hand. And don't you be tempted. Hold the lady's hand, man. <laughs> what he was saying is, you never know what might happen. He said, love your wife, and he told me, he said, and love your children. No matter how ugly they may be sometimes. <laughs> love. <laughs> Week before that, on my birthday, I got a call from one of my daughters. She hasn't spoken to me in about six years. And I don't know why, but she decided to call me on my birthday. 
Dad, I never stop loving you. I love you very much. Love your kids, man. If you raise them right, they'll always come back. A couple of months ago, I, I lost the granddaughter, 28 years old. Two months. Very difficult. Very, very difficult. You lose a grandchild. You never think that you're gonna bury one of your grandkids. Love your kids. Love your family. That's all you got. You don't have anything else. But God is so good. And then I get a call from one of my other daughters who just moved from Paradise in Arizona to move to upstate New York. 30 below zero. Then she said, Dad, I'm pregnant. We lost one, but God gave me another one back. No matter what you're going through, have some, get some joy in your life. Get some joy in your life. Now, joy is not happiness. Joy is a spirit. Happiness is a whim. When adversity comes in your life, the first thing happens to you is happiness is going to whip out. Happiness will whip out every time. You don't believe it, lean on, lean on the happiness. What's your name number 24? Excuse me? Amy. Avery. Do you, do you know? Come on, Amy. Amy, come on here. This is my main man, Amy. Brought him all the way from Arizona. <laughs> my main man. Now you do not play basketball, see you. Are you any good? <laughs> How would you like to play catch with me? Yeah. Now I'm not pretty good. Still okay? Who got my ball back there? It's pretty good. It's pretty, don't, 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 don't be running away from me now. <laughs> when I picked this thing up for the first time, I, uh, I had no idea what to do with it. I couldn't hold it with three hands. But then I learned how to do some things with it that really changed the lives of many, many people. Uh, don't beat the baby lady. <laughs> so I just learned how to do it. I passed all kinds of ways. And uh, people would say, well, what is he doing? And I didn't even know what I was doing myself when I was. But I learned how to really, really handle this thing. I got like, pretty good at it. And uh, many times, I thought that I was doing some things on my own. But I wasn't doing anything on my own. Uh, it's because God is with me. Now, God, God is not in control. A lot of people say, well, God is in control. No, he's not. God is not in control. God put man in control of this planet Earth. Gonna get A behind that. So, uh, when things go wrong with something, this preacher said, no man, God is in control. But if God is in control and somebody robbed the bank, you can't put him in jail because God is in control. If someone came in there and slapped your face, you can't call the police and put the police on him because God is in control. 
no longer. You are in control. And what I want to do, I want to be in control of this ball here. It's just made of rubber, hot air. You know, when people used to talk about the no look wrap around the air, they thought that that was no look wrap around the air.
to ride in the F-16. Now, there are a couple ways when you take off where that, that plane would go off. I was in there for two and a half hours. And it, it can go up like this, it can go up like this, and it can go up like this. And if it goes up like this, everything you ate last month, you will see it again. But I was cool, and I had to be cool, because I was cool. And I, I was, I had it to hear. I, I, I looked like Captain Kirk, I really did. And uh, after about five minutes, the pilot asked me, he said, would you like to fly my airplane? And I got cool like very white. I said, Red home. <laughs> I mean, and we were, we, were, we were cruising along, I don't know how fast we were going. But he asked me through the wheel back and said, well, how would you like to break the sound barrier? Right on, right on. <laughs> That's what I did. Mean. And everything that was in front of me, immediately behind me. That's how fast we were moving. And I believe this is what God showed. John, now, I can literally see people's hair on their head. Not everybody, I'm sorry, sir, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I literally can see their hair on their head. And it just opened up so many, so many windows for me to be able to see that. And hopefully, you, you, you will learn a little about joy today. See, joy is a spirit. Driving through Southern California several years ago, we were in a big gym. And when I was caught, I was hot. I mean, I, it like, I could, it's very difficult to miss, no matter where I was, I could go. Once I was up in a hotel, nine stories high. Oh yeah, it went in. But this time, I was at the other basket, and I shot that ball in. Look like it stayed up forever. And I'm glad it was we were on the inside because if we were on the outside, I probably would have gotten rain. When that ball came down, it hit nothing but that. And the promoter met me at half court. He said, Teach me how to do that. I said, I can't. He said, I just told you to do it. Teach me. I said, I can't do it. He said, Why? I said, You saw that from the outside. The shot came from the inside out. You can't teach that. This is a God's thing. And, and if you people know up here, you know, anybody can play an instrument if you can count one four. Amen? Okay. But, you know, there are a few things that you can't teach. You can't teach speed. And you cannot teach timing. And once you get your timing together, you're going to be better than anybody. Get your timing together. I know what I'm talking about. I know a guy by the name of Earl Garner. You do read, don't you? <laughs> he couldn't read music, but he's one of the greatest pianists of all time. And people would come to his concert and steal his song because he couldn't play the same song twice. He played everything by ear. And everything came from the inside. You know, I saw your jam and I said, 
standing up there. And somebody else took the stone over your mouth and was still moving. But then, that's what happened to the musicians. I don't know what I'm about. I know them all. Yeah, I used to hang out with them. I knew them all. Uh, we could have bought into the Beatles for $2,500. But I didn't have $2,500. And if I had $2,500, I would not put it on the Beatles. Because they were still there. They couldn't even get booked. They stuck in there. They began to write songs. Are y'all coming back? Look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Did y'all turn to the book of John yet? Or coming together now? When? There are going to be people out there, probably people in the supermarket. They're going to come up behind you and just say, hey, if I could just touch him, I don't want hand, because he's anointed, and I will be made whole. It's coming and has to come up. Because I believe that the contract that God gave Adam, and he gave it to the snake, baby, it's almost up. And he won't be able to touch you and when you see the man and the women of God come face, you can just want to rub up against them. So whatever you got in you, I want some of this in me. It, 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 it's, it's coming. And, and, it, and it's coming. It's coming real, real soon. This woman with the issue of blood, when she touched Jesus, he said, he said, who touched me? And Peter said, Master. Touching you. He said, y'all don't understand. Somebody touched me by faith. By faith they touched me and they pulled power out of me. Yeah. Restaurant in town was a grocery store. Are you okay, sir? You all right? Like, what? Does anybody have the time? How much? Ten to eight, he's yawning already. <laughs> 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 yeah. Boy, he got him out. Uh, he the first guy here. He the first guy here. Where did you get here? Y'all got to take it back. Now, the point I'm trying to make, if you want to have joy in your life, go to church. Go to church. And if you're looking, if you're saving and looking for money, go to church. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. That's where I found my wife in church and she was looking good. <laughs> and this was almost 20 years ago and she's still looking good today. She was looking good when she dropped me off at the airport. She was going to look good when she picked me back up from the airport. And when she tells me to do something, I do it. <laughs> and if you guys who say you don't do it, you're not telling the truth. <laughs> One of the things we're going to do when we come back here, uh, we'll bring another lot of the Hot All Stars back. We're going to play basketball now. Who in here would like to play basketball against us? Who would like it? Who would okay? Who would like to play with us? We're, we're probably doing fundraise. So if you're going to play with us. You got to pay for that. <laughs> you got to put the money up for the fundraiser, whatever fundraiser that we're looking for. And everybody today, including me, need fundraisers. Uh, because of the time that we're living in. Man, these are tough times, but these are the best times I've ever had in my life. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart that I am 
I am. From where I come from, I am the American dream. Everybody take that away from me. I don't care where you're going from. I'm not going to take my vision and I'm going to take my dream with me. Without a vision, it's going to perish. And I got, I got about another 75 years to live before. <laughs> At least 120 years, and if I didn't have enough, you'd give me some more. I'm gonna get mine. <laughs> so thank you very much. I'm finished until I come back. When are we coming back? When are we coming back? September, October. Can y'all have that? Yeah. I'm bringing, I'm bringing Pee back. Pee Wee told us when he first sent a memo to us and asked Pee Wee try out. He told us he was six seven. <laughs> when Pee Wee got to us, Pee Wee was five seven. <laughs> But now you're gonna love Hollywood. Hollywood, Hollywood is a real handsome dude. He's a handsome dude. Y'all gonna love that. He knows he's handsome. But he's not as good looking as me. So y'all got to get that. Thank you very much. I love you. God bless you. Thank you.